My name is Jeff Sullivan and I'm with the Optum Data Studio Enablement Team. I'm going to talk today about the usual suspects on what conditions can cause performance issues to DB2. But I want to start first of all and just talk a little bit about and frame the whole performance topic. In a well-tuned uh, application rollout, that is if we ad do adequate system testing, unit testing, uh, integration testing, and we're going on to a new server and we have new connections and so on, you're not going to see these performance issues come up. Because let's face it, performance problems happen when there's a problem. We usually don't plan for them just, just out of the blue, although we should. But when we talk about the usual suspects, there are six areas that we need to look at, and they are as follows. First one is growth. When we talk about growth, this is organic growth, because, let's face it, data seems to grow forever on a new application. We don't seem to plan for, or rarely do we ever archive data, as, but we should. The way that this would look, if I was to graph it in terms of the uh, server workload over time, is it would look like something like this. So this bottom being time, and the, this axis being server workload. The next thing to look at would be any sort of new workload. When we talk about new workload, what we're talking about here would be mainly if we added in either a new instance or if we added a new application to an instance. Now, if we were to add a new instance, where we would see the, the server workload go up would be at the server level if it was a new application, we could see it either on the server or we could see it in terms of the data that we would collect in the instance. If we were to graph this over time, the way we would see this looks more like this. There might be a, a growth here in terms of that organic growth that we talk about, but this being workload again and this being time. The next area would be a change system. A change system can be one of two things. First, it can be either a, a systematic change or it could be an application change. When I say systematic change, this would be a change to uh, something within the uh, settings for, let's say, DB2 or something in the operating system. We could be adding memory to it or more than likely taking memory away. If it was an application change, it could be a change in terms of uh, a particular nuance of the application. We could be taking away a function. We could be changing access path. There could be a number of things to that. Both of these still look the same way in terms of that workload. You're not going to have performance problems, by the way, if the spike went down. The next area would be spikes in of themselves. When I talk about spikes, you can probably guess what that means. And this would be the what, what I would refer to as the one-off SQL. In terms of workload over time, this would be a spike to the system. The next is going to be what I would call the uh, unplanned outage. For an unplanned outage, what we're talking about here would be running out of space, or you could have an overloaded system. And finally, the last one is what I would call a sleep at the wheel. This is where a DBA is not doing their job. This is where they're not doing adequate run stats. They're not adequately checking for space. They're not checking the usual suspects. 
we're not doing good reorgs, and so on. Now, you can probably imagine that each of these are a problem in of themselves, but in most cases, the system will stay up. Here's the thing, though. What you don't want it to happen is for them to turn into unplanned outages. So staying on top of this is the key. So if you're able to keep on top of this, and you're able to monitor this, we'll stay away from having these server level outages. But the trick is, is being able to know what you're looking at here.